Okay, okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divorce D-Day. London is the divorce capital of the world, so we just thought it was a fascinating area to use as a backdrop to tell a complicated modern family story. I felt that the scope of the storytelling, setting it in a world of divorce lawyers, would just offer up so many emotional possibilities. That is a very female-dominated environment, so very naturally and easily you have a drama with a very strong female core. It's a show about women and the Defoe sisters who feel real and truthful and it's about the messy complexity of their lives. You really want to break that family up? What better to live a lie? The idea for the split really came out of a conversation I had with a mother of a fellow pupil at my son's and daughter's school who I got talking to and discovered was a divorce lawyer. Here was a world that I hadn't seen before. You've been an exemplary wife and I can't fault you as a mother. I just don't love you anymore. What Abby's managed to do is take you into a world that very few people have access to. Don't see divorce as failure. Just see some marriages as finite. When I started to realise that actually family law was bigger than just divorce, I thought that was a really interesting area as a way to look at the kind of prism of a family through a kind of family firm, really. I didn't fully walk you through what your divorce will look like. I wanted to create three very different prisons of women, one without any responsibility but no direction, one who's got direction but no responsibility, and one who has responsibility and constantly knows her direction and decides to change the course of her direction. I am Hannah Defoe. I leave the Defoe family business where I have worked professionally as a family lawyer for most of my professional career, and joining a rival firm. New hair, new job. Nathan doesn't see enough of his wife. Hannah's a really successful lawyer. She's under a lot of stress. He's a barrister who works in family law. Answer the question. Hannah, our central character, starts to wonder if the marriage that she is in the moment for, with the wonderful Nathan, the father of her children, whether or not really she's settled for something in that marriage. I think he realizes that Whatever journey Hannah has to go on, she has to go on. How is Christy? Still Danish? Fine. And he's still Dutch. Tremendous. Christy is um, one of those guys, alpha male, very successful. You okay? Yep. Yeah. Hannah, for him, was a very important and real person in his life, and he lost her, and he suddenly finds her back. He's trying to lose his chaos and find stability, and for Hannah, it means going into chaos. Whatever this is, this has to stop. Their marriage will only work if both of us want to be there. And we, more than anyone, need to be busting the myth of the one. We need to say there are a million ones, infinite ones. It's not quite that simple because he gets into trouble himself. No, we need to talk. Tomorrow. No. Nina is the middle sister. She's the joker of the family but she's also the glue. She's a divorce lawyer. She's desperately trying to chase the kind of level of respect and responsibility and the reputation that Hannah has. You walked out of Defoe's. You don't get to tell me what to do now. She's ultimately got a lot of pain. There's a dark side to Nina. Rex. Rose is the baby of the family and hasn't really found her direction. She's a nanny, so she's not like this ball-busting lawyer and isn't interested in that. She is engaged to be married, <laughs> which in a world of divorce and breakups is quite an optimistic and brilliant thing. Yes? Definitely, yes. There's enormous pleasure in watching complicated sibling relationships play out and it's really funny between the three sisters and they really complement each other. There's a great scene in episode two where they're going in to meet their father for the first time. Nicola puts her hand through each of their arms and the three of them go in together like a little team and they're, they're really wonderful together. I love you all more than you will ever know. Ruth Defoe is the chief executive of Defoe's, where she met Oscar Defoe. He is the ex-husband of the mother 
of the Defoe family and he is the father of the three daughters. About 30 years ago, Oscar decamped with the nanny and left Ruth to bring up the three girls. Dad left us when you were seven. Eight. I was eight. And he suddenly appeared out of the blue. And it puts a split down her relationship with, between her and her daughters as some secrets emerge about what happened when he left. You keep away from Hannah, from Nina, from Rose. All the storylines are brilliantly woven together. Abby's writing is incredibly complex and layered. Abby likes to lift the rock up and shine a torch into the, the personal lives of all of these seemingly hugely successful, driven people. And she takes you back home with them and the cask definitely slips increasingly as the show goes on. I will not have this! I will not do that! We screw up in marriages and it doesn't have to be over and we sleep with other people and that doesn't mean that we don't love the person we're with and we feel pain and we feel anger and we love our children and we don't want to be mothers and we want to be mothers and we don't want to be friends and we hate our friends and we love our mothers and we hate our sisters and we you know it's about the contrary feelings we feel for each other it's about love the show and how hard it is to find it and how hard it is to keep hold of it. And the moral of the tale is, the best affairs are the ones you never had.